Hello, this is TK again. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining me today, uh, or tonight, or whenever it is. Um, love to have you. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you for returning, or thank you for being new. Thank you. So yeah, I'm here to tell you about Clan of the Cave Bear. Clan of the Cave Bear is uh, one of my favorite books. Um, I'm going to give you a very spoiled um, review of it. Um, I read it first when I was a child. I say it was early to mid 80s. Um, the book actually came out May 4th, um, 1980, I do believe. Um, and I started reading it really early. So, yeah. Um, it's been, I've, I've kind of transitioned um, on the way I've thought about it and taken it so i have uh, a lot of pros and not a lot of cons um but i do have a con i, I i'm trying to break this up so that it's pretty much i'm going to summarize the story um and then i'm going to give my personal pros and cons about the story uh so yeah um the summer to summarize the story um isla is a young uh, human child that is found by a clan of Neanderthals. Um, she had been uh, lost in an earthquake, um, had been wandering around and been attacked by a cave lion, and had been injured on the thigh uh, with like claw marks on the thigh. Uh, the clan found her um, and raised her uh, to adulthood. She has a child. Um, and then she's kind of, uh, exercised from the clan. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a summarized, uh, version of the story. It, it doesn't even scratch the surface and the depth of, like, the imagery and stuff that, um, Miss Ewell goes into. Um, and that's actually one of the first things on the pros list. So, the pros... Ewell is very good at creating a misery. I mean, she is... You, you're very much transported into the landscape, into the time. Um, she's very thorough, thorough on uh, her descriptions and the practicality of her descriptions and, like, how she describes how life could have been for, you know, a planet of Neanderthals and an Ice Age. And that's very, very beautiful. It's, I mean, it's, the, the book is worth reading just for that, honestly. Um, yeah, another thing is she did research. She really did do her research. Um, for the time, I mean, it was 1980, so she was probably doing, like, her research in the mid-70s. So it was limited. Uh, her research on her plant info is very thorough and actually, you know, very, very legit. Um, I wouldn't suggest, like, you know, living and, like, using plants um, for whatever without, you know, doing your own research and making sure it's good for your body and whatnot. But, yeah, the, the, the descriptions of it, because both um, Isla's mom, adoptive mom, Isa, who adopts her into the clan... Um, Isa is a medicine woman, so she has, like, vast, vast knowledge of medical plants and how to use them and practical, practical applications of, like, how to discover, you know, how plants can be used, and that is really, really cool to, uh, go through and to read. Um, that's something I really enjoyed as a kid, and I still enjoy today as a 46-year-old human, um, adult, and that's really cool. Um, the good, it's a good story standalone. I mean, it's a very solid story, very thorough. Uh, there, there's fully developed characters. There, there's immersion into the plot. It's, it's a hugely well-developed story. It's a beautiful story, and it's, it's good standalone, or as first in the series of six books. It's really good. Another thing she does that's really cool is the deep lore. The deep lore she has for the clan. It's 
it's very, very cool. It's very interesting to hear about the memories and about, you know, their, their rituals and how they have, like, you know, developed and transformed over, like, millennia. You know, because in the lore, they can actually, like, remember back to when they were, like, in the primordial soup. <laughs> I mean, they can remember, like, evolution pretty much. And that's one of the, uh, you know, rituals is to, you know, take some uh, hallucinogenic uh, plants and to go back into their memories. And actually, in the, in the lore... It's like the shamans, um, or the medicine medicine men, or, you know, the powerful men, uh, that can access these spirit worlds, they actually can connect, like, telepathically with other members of the clan, which is pretty cool. I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's kind of a, 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 an interesting, you know, dimension to, you know, kind of a, uh, prehistoric fiction story but it also adds a little bit of element of like supernatural stuff and spirituality which is very cool and it's it's not really heavy handed um which is like kind of something that she gets into very like ugh, I'm not going to go into it right now but this specific cultural uh, ritual mystic spirituality stuff is not heavy handed <clears throat> is basically just, you know, using as, use as, you know, decoration, you know, to further the plot, which is awesome. Okay, um, yeah, and just to sum up that, uh, last lore and the telepathy, telepathy, uh, aspect, that is, you'll state that is kind of the reason why, uh, Neanderthal's uh, brain brain matter was like actually a little bit more than modern humans are. Um, that that is kind of a segue into our next segment, which is the cons, because that is not more current um, information. States that you know it, that's not the reason why the brain was bigger, and that's not what it would like have kind of, uh, encouraged, um, so, he, but she was going by, you know, what it was, and thing is, it's a work of fiction, that, that's thing, it's a work of fiction, so even my con list, which is literally just one thing, is not historically correct, that, that's okay, because it's a work of fiction, <laughs> it's a work of fiction, um, a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, but some people get kind of bent out of shape about that aspect. But she was coming from 1970s information. Plus, she wasn't like, she didn't devote her life to studying this. She kind of, it was like a rabbit hole thing for her. You know, she, she did do a lot of studying and she did study and learn, you know, she educated herself. But it wasn't like, she wasn't a professor. She wasn't a doctor you know, and archaeology, or paleontology, or paleoanthropology, or anything, you know, she wasn't even a history doctor, so, you gotta tell you, she was a writer, she was a really good writer, that's what she was, and that's what she gave us, so even my cons list, um, no, the, this, the, the, his, it's not historically correct all the way through, but it's also a work of fiction, and that can be given, so overall, overall, this book is excellent. I love this book. It's been one of my favorite parts of my growing up and one of my safety zones. Um, I have it on audio book, and I, when I can, when I can get a copy, I like to have a uh, hard copy of it as well. So yeah, Clan of the Cave Bear. Thank you for listening to my review. If you liked what I had to say, if you have any comments, uh, please leave them. Um, leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to hear more from me. From me. Um, and if you are, are already subscribed, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I, I yeah, I much appreciate it. Thank you for your ex existence. 
I know, I know, I, I muddle my words, but I want to say that very clearly. Thank you for existing. For real. Thank you.